Well, good morning or afternoon. I'm not sure. I think it's cool that we have a 12 o'clock service. Well, Happy New Year 2021. It's about time, right? We had a fair, a fair, a fair amount of things going on last year. So I think that God has some amazing things uh, for our church, for you in particular. If you're joining us online, I just want to take a moment and just say, so glad that you're joining us. We're glad that you're here uh, joining us uh, in spirit wherever you're at as we begin this new series in this new year called Breaking Free. I'm very, very excited. I think God's going to do some remarkable things. A couple things I want to just go over before we jump into that is we do have uh, a, an additional service so that we have as God gives growth, as people um, get more comfortable coming back. Uh, we want them to be able to have this, the uh, physical distancing. So uh, we made convenient times, 9, 10, 30, and 12. And so obviously, this is the 12 o'clock service. Also, um, we have our pastoral care card. Now, in the status update, it had said there was a connect card, but we actually want this, uh, and unless you're online, then we do use the connect card for that. But for you, if you're in the in-person service, you have the pastoral care card, and we use that. Here, it looks like this, except yours is smaller. <laughs> and uh, this is really important for us because it helps us with uh, getting information that we need so that we have a current database. We don't use it uh, to send you junk mail. You're not going to... You know, we don't sell it to anybody. It's, we keep it very, very uh, confidential. You only hear from us maybe, you know, one, two, three times max in a, a year using that. But it's primarily so that if you are in a difficult place, you go through a crisis, uh, we have that information. And we only have it if you give it to us. Now, we do this every year. We try to keep up with having accurate information on people in our church. But, you know, this past year, obviously, we had COVID. We wanted to call everybody a few times. Uh, two, three times, uh, th and about 20% of the numbers were wrong. Uh, and so we try to email them another 20%. We're, you know, we just, we're, we're incorrect. We, we don't, and I know that people change their phones and all, that's why we do this. So we would love to have that information. Also, sometimes, you know, things get missed that, that doesn't get inputted right. And so we, that's another reason we want to, we want to have that. So if you would, I'd love everybody to fill it out. Uh, we'd love to have that information on you as you leave today. There's a clear box on the side. Uh, you can just put that in. Obviously, we're not collecting an offering during this time. And, of course, online, you can uh, give us that information through uh, the pathway that we've provided for you through Vineyard Live or Facebook or whatever, whatever platform you're on. So that's uh, the pastoral care card. Then we're starting today, 21 days of prayer and fasting. I tried to let you guys know. I know we skipped service last weekend, so you may not have known. It's not too late. Um, we don't get legalistic about it here, okay? We just, you know, we just get started now. Decide on, hey, I'm going to get in part of this because God will use that in your life in a powerful way. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But most of us are going to be doing a food fast, something associated with food. You either fast a particular type of food or... Or for a space of time, like from sun up, from sun down, or, you know, maybe a, a meal. Some of you can't do a meal for whatever reason. Maybe you can't, or you just don't know, how, you know, you don't want to. Uh, there's other types of fasts. You fast uh, TV, fast news. There's different types of fasts. Just do something that helps you to kind of reorient your life for these next 21 days a little more around the Lord. Hopefully, maybe it'll create a little more time uh, for you to get into God's Word and to pray. So that's something we're doing together. And then during the 21 days on the Saturday mornings, if you can possibly join us, corporate prayer, it's a great opportunity just for an hour. We'll pray together. If you're online, we'll be doing that online. If you miss it, we'll keep it up for 24 hours so that you can participate. Also, the Freedom uh, Small Groups. Now, at the end of the series, we're going to have a sign-up for small groups. If you're in small groups, you know how powerful they are. If this is new to you, I am encouraging you, inviting you, be part of what we're doing. Because we're in this series, Breaking Free, but for most of you, you're only going to find your, your big um, aha freedom moment 
when you get involved in all of this. Not just the four-part series we're doing, but when you get involved in a small group. It's going to be, we're, and we're all doing it together. Usually small groups, everybody's doing something different. Uh, this year, we've kind of declared it to be a year of freedom and a year that we're all going to do this together. So if you've already taken a freedom group, we'd love to have you lead or host you heard that in the, the, the news clip we just had, uh, that we are taking registrations if you're interested in leading or, or hosting, and, and primarily if you've taken this, this particular class before, course before. We've, we've done a few already, um, and we'll, we'll teach you what you need to know, but we'd love to have you. If you haven't participated in it, we want you just to come and experience freedom with us and be part of that. Okay, and then there's also the growth track. We do growth track every month. It's really a critical part of what we do here. And so growth track begins at the beginning of each month, which is today, with step one. So step one's right after the service. If you've not taken step one, I would you please take it? Well, we're going to watch your kids. We're, we're, you know, Sharon and I personally teach it. It's really, really important to us. We've got some food in there for you. We'd love to have you in there because it's so important. And grow, in step one, we talk about the history of the church. We talk about um, the government, who I answer to, how we use our, our, how we steward the money around here. We talk about our values. We talk about our vision. We talk about what the church will look like in 10 years from now. And so if you take step one, you can, de- you can decide, uh, do I want to take the other three steps? Because it really is the, the, the entry way. We'd like you to take them all in one month if possible. But you don't have to do that. But step one is so important. And growth track. The growth track is because we want to help you in your spiritual growth. The journey that God has for you. We believe God's got everybody on a journey. That's his will. That's his desire that you're growing spiritually. What happens is the first step in your spiritual journey is to ask Christ into your life. And some of you need to do that, frankly. You need that. You, you're far from God. You know that. And you need to, you need to ask Christ. God, say, God, I, I want you, I want to be close to you. I want to have a personal relationship with you. That is so important. We call that know God, to know God, not just intellectually, but you have a relationship with him. And that's the first step. But you know, the very next step is to find freedom. In other words, you see what happens is when you ask Christ into your life, God redeems your spirit. You, you're going to go to heaven. You have a relationship with God. Your spirit's good. But the problem is, uh, you still have an unredeemed soul. Your emotions, your addictions, your habits, your compulsions, all those things, they're kind of like, they still need to be redeemed. And God wants to do that too. But that's what we call finding freedom. So knowing God is step one, where you ask Christ into your life. And then step two is this part where you say, okay, I want to find freedom. And that's what we're doing. That's what this month is about. That's what this season, as we go into 2021, is about finding freedom. And we want to find freedom together. Now, Jesus is all about us finding freedom. He, I mean, it's his ministry. If you see in the Gospels, we'll just look at a few of the, of, of the, of the stories in the Gospel. One is when Jesus begins his ministry. Right here, he's going into church, which is the synagogue, and he opens up, first thing you do, first sermon of Jesus, opens up the, you know, Isaiah 61, that scroll, and reads it. And here's what it says. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Now he's talking, that, that actually, Isaiah 61 is a prophecy about, about Jesus. It's about him. So he goes, he's talking about himself. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim Good news. So that's the good news that where we invite Christ into our life. That is the first step I was talking about, where you say, God, I, I, I want to get close to you. I want Jesus in my life. I want you to forgive my sins. And so he's the good news to the poor. Notice the second thing, though. He has sent me to proclaim freedom. That's what we're talking about. Let me, let's all say that together. Proclaim freedom. I think the masks are making it hard for me to hear. Let's hear it again. Proclaim freedom. Freedom. I love that. That's what we're doing. We're proclaiming. For, it's God's freedom into our lives for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, for the things. We can't see what God has for us if we are caught up in the past, if we're stuck, if, we're, if, we're, uh, if we have strongholds we haven't dealt with. 
then it, it really causes us to be derailed from what God has for us. And so he wants us to be able to see the reality that he has for us, see our future, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is what I believe God has for you, that this is his year of favor, not just because we're a little closer to a vaccine. That's bigger than that. It's because God has favor he wants to pour into your life. You know, I know that coronavirus took probably almost all of us off guard, if not all of us, but it didn't take God off guard. I mean, he knew it was coming, and he still let it happen. It's not like he said, oh, myself, what happened? You know, I didn't see that coming at all. No, God lets things come into our lives that are painful, that are hard, that are disruptive, because those things cause us to re-examine our lives and say, are, are things going the way they should be going? Is God center place like he's supposed to be? And if not, we can realign ourselves with that. You, looking back at Jesus' life, they said God anointed Jesus of Nazareth of, with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went around doing good and healing those who were under the power of the devil. He's talking about deliverance. Now, when you talk about deliverance nowadays in our American culture, a lot of people get a little weird about that. Like, well, deliverance, what's going on here? You know, I saw that movie. They, the neck spun around, they're vomiting green stuff and all. Listen, that's Hollywood mumbo jumbo. You have to decision. See, most of us in America have built our theology, our understanding of who we are, of what the world is, who God is, based on TV shows and movies. That's really the, the, the pulpits of America today is, is, is screenwriters. And so they've done all of their Hollywood stuff, but I'm telling you, that's not biblical. That's not what, what, is, what deliverance is, is when God sets us free from those things that are oppressing us, that are holding us back. And we all need that. We all need biblical deliverance where we break free, where we're set free. And God wants that for you. Some, you know, there's a number of people in our church that came to Christ recently, this past series and the, at the movies, at Christmas, at some of the others, sometime during this past year, it's been a disruptive year, a number of people made decisions for Christ. Well, you come to Christ, your spirit's right with God, but you still need to be set free. There's still some things that are, that are, that are not working well for you because you've been living in a different mode, a different way of living. And God's saying, I want to I want you not, not only do I want to save your spirit, but I want to save your soul and your emotions and your marriage and your finances. And, and I want to give you peace of mind. I, I mean, God has, he goes, I want you to have all of it. It says, the reason the son of God, which is Jesus, appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So the devil is trying to cause you, oh, he's, his, and the devil's work is all trying to harass you. Steal, kill, destroy anything can do to rob your peace, rob any kind of blessing out of your life. And Jesus is all about destroying that, not just the devil's work in the world around the planet, but in your life. Anything the devil's trying to do to harass you, to steal and harm you, Jesus is all about, hey, I want to destroy that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rid that uh, in your life. And when we when we take time and look at what God says, study his truth about us, and then we pair it up with 21 days of prayer and fasting, you get a spiritual blast, a momentum that you don't get any other time. I really think January, when we do 21 days of prayer and fasting, it's the most spiritually impacting time of our church. It's a great way to start the year, too. But it's just when we pair it up, and today, this, this month, we're going to be pairing up 21 days of prayer and fasting. And, and God does some amazing things. Here's a great verse on fasting. It says, even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. So he says, there's a, the first part is for you, if you know you're far from God. You know, maybe you made a decision for Christ years ago, but you're far from God today. He goes, return to me. Come back with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. He's saying, in other words, with humility. You come in. You're not, you're, not, you're not above all of that. You're saying, hey, I, I, I want to hear what God has to say. And you know, when we focus on God, a couple of verses later, he says, I will give you back the crops that the locusts ate. That's the promise that God has for you. And you know, the locusts, the, the, the devourer has been harassing and, and, and causing a lot of problems for a lot of people. Some of you have had loss this past year. 
the locusts, you know, the, the devil and the, and, and the schemes of the devil. It's, it's, it's had its heyday in your home, in your finances, in your, in your personal life, in your mind, with your emotions. All that. And God says, I'm going to restore it. There's going to be a restoration and I'm going to believe with you. We're going to believe together. We're going to fast and pray. We're going to believe God's going to be all about restoring the things that the enemy has tried to take from us. The promises, the dreams, or health, all those things. Now, here's our theme verse for our series on breaking free. There's four parts that we're doing. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world wages war. In other words, there's a worldly way about going about getting, getting your, what, what you think is your due. You can fight. You can cheat. You can, you can rage out. You can, you know, people use guns. They use, the world uses explosives. There's a worldly way of fighting a war, but he goes, and some of you need to know God's way of fighting a war because the, 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 the enemy is trying, he's at war with you. And he's trying to steal those things that your future and the things that God has for you. He says, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish. And here's a key word here, strongholds. The strongholds, the things that, that are holding us back, things that we've bought into that, that, uh, that keep us from, from the best life that God has for us. Strongholds, those things that are yet to be redeemed. We, we think we're doing good, and then all of a sudden we get under stress and we fall back into them. We think we're doing good, and all of a sudden we're watching something, and it triggers something, and we fall back into it. And it's, it could be anything, an addiction, a habit, a compulsion, uh, you know, a spending problem, uh, an alcohol problem, a drug problem. I mean, it's on and on and on. And, and he says, no, I'm, gonna, I'm all about demolishing the strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension. That's where we get the word pretending, to, to, to pretend something when it's not really true, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So there's the knowledge of God, there's God's truth about you, and then there's the falsity, there's the pretension that's not true about you. And there. At enmity, there are, there, there's, a, there's a war going on. And he says that we need to establish ourselves in, in the knowledge of God so that we can be set free. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And so the war really happens, he says, in the thought life, in our thoughts. We don't just let those run amok. We don't let the devil harass us with his lies and his falsities, his pretensions. No, we're at war and we're going to say, I'm going to, my mind is where the battleground is happening. And, and here's the truth. If you, when you ask Christ into your life, you allow the authority of God to come in, the authority of God. Now, sometimes we give power to the devil we, because of the lies. When we buy into the lies, the things that are not the knowledge of God, but instead the falsities, the pretension, we give away the, the, that, that power, and then all of a sudden it becomes a stronghold in our life. Stronghold really is another word for a lie. We're buying into the lie. We're living out a lie that's not true about us. You know, elephants, when they train them, and they've been training elephants way before, you know, the, the, the circus, you know, way back in Africa and in, in India, they would train an elephant. They would take the little fella, put a rope or a chain around his, his, his leg, stake it into the ground, and, uh, and then the, he couldn't get away because he was so small he couldn't pull it out. And then they could... They could do whatever they want. They could, you know, walk him like a dog, whatever. And then the elephant would grow real big. And in his mind, he was still under the impression, he or she, that I can't get away because of, he'd look at that rope. Now, we all know we'd look at it and go, that elephant's huge. He could just take off if he wanted. But not to the elephant. Elephant had bought into the lie. See, it's, it, oh, I can't get away because of this little rope. Although, the rope couldn't hold him back, but in his mind, he believed it. You know, many of you remember that, that incident that happened back in 2002 with Elizabeth Smart she, in Utah. She was, uh, she was abducted by some guy who thought he was a prophet. His name was David Mitchell. He, he, uh, he snuck into her house, the parents' house that night at knife point kidnapped her, brought her up into the mountains. They lived in a tent for months. He raped her every night. I mean, it's a, it's a horrible, horrible story. Uh, and uh, within a few weeks, though, he had convinced her that she could not get away and that if she tried, everybody around would die. And so he started taking her into a nearby town. 
And he had a, you know, a veil on her so that nobody could see who she was. And she never said anything. All she had to do was cry out. In fact, at one point, they were in a library and a police officer came up to them, came up to David Mitchell and said, hey, show a photograph and said, do you know, that, have you seen this person? Because we're, it's a little girl, she was abducted, uh, we're looking for her. And Elizabeth Smart said, listen to this, she knows all she has to do is say it's me and, she, and the nightmare would be over. But she was convinced that everybody in the library would die, even though he, David Mitchell had no weapon. Why? Because she had bought into a lie. She was one step, one word away from freedom. But she had bought into a lie. I think that's the way a lot of times we work, is that we've bought into a lie that's been told us and reinforced for so long that we don't take that step of freedom. And, and God's saying, hey, there's a truth that, but you, in order to, to move on that, you've got to reject the lie. You've got to step away from that. And that's really the nature of a stronghold. A stronghold is a prisoner locked by deception, living a life that is just not true. And so many of us, we live that because we, it's just, we've lived it for so long. It's been part of who we are. We just, yeah, that's my problem. That's what I've got. Anything that exalts itself in our mind, which is pretending to be bigger or more powerful than what God can do. God can do he can do more than anything the lie is promising it can do. But you got to believe it. you got to say, I'm going I'm, I'm to stop believing the lie. Here's some symptoms of a stronghold. They steal our focus. You can't really focus. You're trying, to, you're trying to work. You're trying to do something. And your mind keeps going somewhere else, maybe to that addiction or that habit. It causes us to feel uh, controlled. You know, we're, we're, it's, it even robs us of our identity. No, I'm no longer somebody with a drinking problem. I'm an alcoholic. I mean, we start to just believe that's, that's who I am. It, it gives incredible power to that stronghold. Uh, it consumes our emotional energy. We start to feel hopeless all the time. We're depressed. Uh, we have no emotional energy. We struggle with guilt and shame, all kinds of things. Stealing our emotional energy distracts us from our purpose. God has a purpose for you. And we miss our purpose if we're always stuck in this stronghold, in this bondage. We're not free. And so God can't move us forward to our purpose he has for us because we are, we're stuck. It robs us of abundant life, which is Jesus' promise. He says, I have come so that you can have abundant life. But you have to make that decision to say, I'm going I'm to believe that truth. Sometimes we just give up on it. You know what? That's for other people. But that's not for me. But here Jesus says, no. I have come that you would have life and you would have life to its full. You would have abundant life. It says, they will come to their senses. I love this. And my prayer for you, my prayer during uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting is that all of us would come to our senses about what God says is true about us and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. That's a description of a stronghold. You feel like you're in captivity. So what is Jesus' method of deliverance? Well, he talks about it here. He says, when a strong man armed to the teeth stands guard in his front yard. In other words, that's Satan he's describing. Saying he's guarding, he's claiming that you're his and that, and that you don't have to serve God and that you can't serve God. And here's what Satan is saying. He's saying, don't listen to Pastor Andy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. My situation's unique. I'm, you're, that's, that's, if, you're, if that's what you're thinking, that's, that's the enemy trying to speak to you, trying to derail you. He says, yeah, no, you're mine. You're safe and sound in my, in, in, in my, in, in my control. But what, a, what if a stronger man comes along with superior weapons, which is Jesus, then he's beaten at his own game. The arsenal that gave him such confidence hauled off and his precious possessions plundered. That he's talking about, Jesus is talking about you being set free, breaking free once and for all. So how does that happen? Well, let me give you three things as we go in to this new season in our church, which I'm very excited about. Three essentials for finding freedom. One is, is the battle is in your thought life. You take back your thought life, you, it doesn't just run amok. You don't just, just think and dwell on whatever. I mean, you're, God's going, he, he wants to do something in your life. Remember that verse earlier? It said, take every thought captive to Christ. 
We, 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 there's an active part of this. That's part of what 21 days of prayer and fasting is about. What's up with fasting? Well, fasting helps us to, uh, to create a place in our life where God can start to change our thought life. Every time you're fasting and you're hungry and you want something and, you're, and, and it reminds you, oh, God's doing something in my life. And, and particularly if you're fasting things that have kind of like an unhealthy hold on you. You know, it's, it's, it's not wrong by itself, but, but you know, it, it's, it's not helping you. It's actually harming you in some way. So you fast that. As I said, you can do more than one thing. Well, you might, you might want to fast things that give you more time. Like TV, all of us, anybody who says, oh, I don't have enough time, Pretty much all of us have some TV we can cut out of our lives or watching, you know, you know, Netflix or whatever. So, so you cut out stuff that'll give you more time so you can focus on what God has to do in your life and, and, you, and, and, and things that bring you down. For the most part, there's some news that when you turn it off, you don't feel more uplifted. You don't feel more encouraged. You don't get up and think, oh man, the day is going to be wonderful now. I just, all that wonderful news that just, I just ingested. No. So maybe 21 days, you just kind of put that aside. Or maybe there's a person that's bringing you down. You go, Andy, that's my spouse. Well, I'm not saying to fast your spouse. <laughs> but, you know, there's some people you, you can just say, I, that, that person's not good in my life. And I need to, I need to fast that, you know, at least for 21 days. And, and so that I can, what, I'm, it's all about, hey, I'm not going to, it's my, my thought life is important. And then if you're, you know, you, ha- you stumble, you have something that triggers you to cause you to fall back, then you go to God and you, you know, you spend some time in prayer. So it's, listen, God wants to do something through his word into your thought life. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, in other words, that part that's not redeemed, you, you're going to heaven, you're good with God, but your soul, your emotions, your habits, your addictions, those compulsions, those things that are unredeemed, that's your sinful nature and it's controlling you. See, you think about it. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, how does that happen? Well, by, by letting God into your thought life. Think about things that please the Spirit. So that's what we're doing with 21 days of prayer and fasting. Letting God have more space. Letting the Holy Spirit come in and change the way that we're, that we, you know, the stinking thinking that's causing us to, to, to do things that, that harm us, that hurt us. If your sinful nature controls your mind, there is death. Not physical death, but it's death of, you know, of joy, death of peace in your life, death of a relationship, death of of, of your health, okay, all kinds of things that it har- harms us. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, well, now you're living with life and with peace. W- you know, life giving, eating from the tree of life. This is what we're going for, saying, God, we want this in our lives. Now, just a few chapters later, he says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Know that you've put your faith in Christ. There's still the world that's going to try to get you to live their way. And if you try to live both, where you're a Christ, you know, hey, I put Christ in my life and I'm going to live like the world, you're going to be miserable because that's not God's will for you. But let God transform you into a new person by changing, here it is again, the way you think. God knows that our thought life is where the battle is fought and where the battle is lost or won. And so he says, I want to I'm, I change the way you think. I want to take the things that are not true out of your life and put in my truth. I will never change my life until I change the way I think. I'll never change my life until I change the way I think. So your thought life, very, very important. Then also you identify the lie. You kind of expose it for what it is. That is not true about me. That is not true about my destiny, about what God has for me. And you expose it because in the darkness, where it's unexposed, where it's unexplored, that's where Satan has his greatest dominion over us. That's where he has his power over us. Notice this verse. It says, when the devil lies, Jesus says, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So he's all about speaking lies because he knows if you believe it, he then has this stronghold in your life. 
And so we're all about 2021, we're breaking strongholds. We're going to break free. Things are going to be different. We're going to expose those lies. We're going to put in God's truth. Now, uh, so we're doing that today. We're doing that in this series. Next week, we're going to be talking about addiction, the lies of addiction. From I've, pretty much everybody, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a surprise to you where addictions come from. You're, so I hope you don't miss that. I hope you come ready because God, I think God's going to do some amazing things there. And then the week after that, I'm going to talk about, about the sexual lies, the lies that Satan tells us about sex. Do you think there's any lies about sex? Oh, yeah. Now, we live in a culture where so many people believe those lies, we just kind of accepted it. You know, oh, well, that must be true because, you know, so many people believe it. But they're, they're, they're lies that are not true. And when we act on those, we're not living our very best life for God. And so we're going to talk about that. So it's going to be, you know, a service that in two weeks from now, a PG-13 or so, you know, or so. Uh, so if you have kids with you, you like that, then I advise you utilize our amazing kids ministry, you know, and, you know, but I, listen, if you have the courage to come and listen to lies about sex, I have the courage to talk about it. But I'm not going to just wink, 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 and our culture's doing crazy stuff and nobody's talking about it, so we just kind of, well, it must be normal. That'll keep you stuck from God's best for your life. And I don't want that. And we don't want that. So we're declaring this as a year of freedom for us. When we expose the lie, we defeat the liar. Jesus said that's, that's who he is. He's, that's all he is. He's the father of lies. That's his thing. So we take back our thought life, identify the lie, and then replace that lie with God's truth. I mean, you, take, you expose the lie, you get rid of it, but then God's truth has to come in its place so that you can walk in the fullness of what God has for you. And, and that can be hard because when we expose the lie, it can be a little humility. It can, there's humility that comes with that because you can think, well, you know, I bought, I've believed that lie so long, it, it's, it feels awkward. It makes us feel insecure. There's fear associated with it, right? I mean, nobody wants to admit that you bought into a lie, especially for years. You wouldn't put that on your resume. Oh, I, I trust, I, I believe lies. No, right? But that's why it's deception. And, and, and we're like that elephant or Elizabeth Smart where we just, we just, our freedom is one step away, but we're just, we don't know how to get there or we really believe it. And so you might say, well, Andy, uh, you know, I've, I mean, I think I'm born that way. No, no, no. There's nothing that's more powerful than God and his ability to free you, no matter what it is. You go, well, Andy, I, uh, my dad always did that, and so I do it. And in fact, it's been in our, you know, everybody in our family has done that. No, no, no. It doesn't matter how much, ge you know, ge genealogy is involved. God's more powerful than that. You go, well, Andy, I, the doctor said this about me, or the psychologist said this about me. So it must be true. No, no. If it's not, if it doesn't line up with God's word, then it is a lie. God's more powerful than no matter what authority or what lie has, has you bought into. But it does take not only exposing it, but then saying, I'm going to replace it with God's truth. What does God really say about me? Now, my, my friends, listen, it's this simple. We do not gather to play church. That's not my gig. I settled that way back when I did receive. I, I gave my life to Christ when I was 18, and then I had a full-on meltdown at 19 because it took me a year, I'm slow, to figure out that Christianity was for real. You know, I mean, I wanted peace with God, and I asked Christ in my life, but then I, it started, I started figuring it out, connecting the dots. Oh, wow, this thing is either, if it's for real, I need to go all in, or I'm not playing around. And that's been my life, and certainly that's what I invite you into. That's what Vineyard's about. We don't play church. This is the real deal here. We're all about seizing what God has for us, and it is real, and God does do amazing things in our lives. He's all about doing the miraculous. His power is real. It's available to you, but we have to access it. We have to go to God, and here's a verse that talks about that. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. He says, you and I, we are in a, we're in a war is what it is. And he says, you have armor he's given to you. And then he lists it, which are, uh, you can read that on your own. They're, they're, it's all of them are defensive, defensive armors. But he also gives us uh, some offensive weapons. 
one or really two, actually, two offensive weapons. And here they are. Take the sword of the Spirit. What is that? Well, he says, which is the word of God, God's truth about you. God has a truth about you that you have not yet believed in. And my prayer, our prayer, is that this will be the year and really the season where God's truth takes hold, takes hold of you. And I've said over the years, uh, in January, I usually say it in January, that give us one year. Watch what God can do in your life if you give us one year of just doing everything, all the programming of the vineyard. You take growth track, you go to the weekend services, you get in a small group. I mean, just do all the things that we say and watch what happens in one year. But I am saying in 2021, that one year has been shortened to three and a half months. Three and a half months, you just do, do everything we were talking about. You, get, you come to all of the four series of Breaking Free, you start praying, you start fasting, you fast something, some of you haven't made a decision what you're going to fast yet, well, you know what, it's time, okay, this is it, it's at the moment, just choose, something's better than nothing, just choose whatever comes to your mind, it'll probably be the thing that comes to your mind, and you think, well, I'm not fasting that, that's probably what God wants, I'll just tell you right up, okay, that's usually it, and you start fasting, you take growth track, you get involved in a small group, absolutely critical, and commit to go into as many of those as you possibly can. And then we're going to conclude with a freedom conference, which will be absolutely uh, just, just off the charts, insane, amazing. You do that, and I guarantee you will see a whole new level of freedom in your life. whole new level of joy and power and God's presence in your life. So you... That's God's word and you pray, which is what we're doing, right? It's all about combining that. So you don't just do one. One is powerful. You read God's word and then you pray, but you combine them and you pray the word of God. That's where the real power, it's like taking two sticks of dynamite, putting them together and the explosive power is multiplied. Don't just pray and don't just read God's word. Pray the word of God. We'll be doing that on Saturday mornings when we pray God's word. If, you're, if that's new for you, then Beth Moore has a book called Praying, the, Praying God's Word. I advise you to, to download that. Go read that book, a great book. But that's the power. God's truth. Letting it change the way we think. Extract those lies and replacing it with God's truth. Let's bow our heads and pray. You just take a moment and just, whether you're online or whether you're here in the physical service, just let's commit this to God. Because honestly, none of us really have anything, you know, that changes anybody. And I'm part of that. It's not me. It's only what, we, when we go to God, what God brings to the equation. God, anything, any one of you plus God is a majority. God wants to do something in your life. So let me lead us in prayer. Father, right now, take our thoughts and transform them. Would you say that? Say, God, today, I want to take captive every thought in obedience to Christ. If it doesn't line up with your word, if it's a lie, I want to expose that. It has no authority in my life. And it has no power. You say, God, this year, I'm just not going to hold on until the vaccine comes out. God, you have something for me today. And I want to move toward that. I want to take my spiritual journey in that direction. And that involves deliverance. But listen, deliverance is all about knowing the deliverer. And Jesus Christ is the deliverer who delivers us from the things that hold us bondage. The lies, the strongholds. Say, God, today, I want you. I want more of you. If you've never asked Christ into your life, that is the first step. Maybe you're saved or maybe you're not. Maybe you don't even know. But you know you're not where you need to be with God. You know you need to be closer. And so I'm going to invite you to just pray a prayer. Don't start this year. All of this, what we're talking about, won't help at all if you don't take this first step. 
where you say yes to God. I want you in my life. So with every head bowed, if you're, you know, have your eyes closed, don't worry about what somebody's thinking next to you. This is between you and God. And I'm going to invite you to just pray along with me. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or come forward. I'm going to let you keep your anonymity. But I would like to know if you're saying, Andy, I want, I want to pray that prayer. I'm ready. If that's you, you're saying, I'm ready. I, I want to get close to God today. I want to get that thing settled. Then I want to lead you in prayer. And just let me know, just boldly, without hesitation, just put your hand up right now. If that's you, saying, Andy, I want to pray with you. Okay, bless you. Who else? Anybody else? Okay. Put your hand down. Just pray to say, dear God, today, I come home to you. Forgive me for the lies that I've bought into that are not true about me. Forgive me for the times I've, re- I've, I've lived out those lies. I've only harmed myself and harmed others. You say, God, today is a new day for me. I invite your Holy Spirit into my life to renew me, enlighten my mind, and empower me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, you know what? We always want to celebrate those who make decisions for Christ. Would you just kind of just say, hey, we're in, the same, we're in there with you. We're going to pray with you. We certainly love the fact that you're here. If you're new uh, to church, this is your, then we want to invite you to be part of what's going on here. We'd love to have you come and be part of it. Yeah, online, we have ways for you to serve and get involved that way as well. Just let us know. If you prayed to ask Christ into your life, you prayed with me, you have any prayer requests, let me know about it on the pastoral care card, which is what we're using. Just write that on there. And then remember, we'd like that card from everybody as you leave. Put that in the clear box that's mounted on the wall. We'd love to have yours from, uh, if you're online as well, we are using the connect card for you. Also some ways to give. Uh, you can give through the, you know, the give button, Vineyard Live, uh, the text 45777. You know, it's, we don't have to give, we get to give. It's an honor. When I got my stimulus check, I didn't lose my job. And so I'm giving my stimulus check to invest in, what the, king, in the kingdom of God and what, and what the Lord's doing here at Vineyard. And that's an honor for me. Could I find ways of spending it and shopping? Yeah, but I'm, I want to look for an opportunity uh, to, to enrich. And some of you, you're in that same place. You, honestly, you didn't need that. And yet you could say, the government gave it to you, but I like to look at it as God's in, jo- in charge of this stuff. It's God, God resourced me. God, I want to be able to resource what you're doing. So some of you, I invite you to join me uh, and, 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 and support what God's doing here uh, with your stimulus check. That's a big ask, I know, because you probably already had plans for it. But, uh, or just give a portion of it. But, you know, honestly, for many of us, we didn't, we didn't need it. If you needed it, absolutely use that. I don't want you to feel bad at all. But certainly it's my privilege to, to support the work of God, and I love doing it. Well, would you stand with me? We're going to just conclude with one final song and uh, just kind of declare the truth that we agree with what God says about us. Let's do that together. Father, thank you, Lord, for your caring and loving touch for each one of us. Lord, we want more of you. This, we declare to be a year of freedom, a year of deliverance, a year of walking away from strongholds that maybe we've struggled with our whole life. But this will be a year where we will set, be set free in Jesus' name. Amen.